This is a review of Heroes of Time. It's available now on Steam for $4.99. It is a indie RPG that very much takes inspiration from games like Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross, Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, you know, just in general, Super Nintendo and PS1 era 2D RPGs. It doesn't really do anything to uh, reinvent the wheel, so to speak, but it does do most of the things that those games did particularly well. There's some, some bugs and some small little issues that I encountered that were annoying, and they were minor, but when you take a bunch of little things, they start to weigh a lot and really kind of hinder the experience. So you start off and you're in the future, and then the game will eventually send you back in time. And that's all I'll really say about the story, because I don't want to spoil it, because it's a fairly short game. It took me about three and a half hours to play through it. There is uh, more content that you can do. There's other side objectives, and there's multiple endings and things of that nature. But as far as the story goes, that's all I'm really going to say, because I don't ever like to spoil stories in the games that I review. So... The combat is very basic. You have attack, you have skills, you have magic, you can use items. Each character has different skills and magic and what have you, different equipment that they can uh, wear. There's different types of weapons and things of that nature. You can wear an accessory that affects your different attributes. All stuff that we've seen before. Nothing uh, too crazy. And uh, you have your basic uh, statistics. Your attack, defense, magic attack, magic defense, all that sort of stuff. And um, that's basically it in terms of the basic infrastructure of how the combat works. Um, you navigate throughout the world. You move a little bit on the sluggish side, which I wish your default move speed was a little bit faster but it is what it is i did have a bug a few times where it got really slow and kind of jittery and i don't really know what caused that but it was almost like a stuttering and uh i don't know it kind of just fixed itself after going to a new area but that was one of the annoying things that i did encounter and then you do get vehicles for mobility Eventually, for the overworld, you get your typical boat, you get an airship, standard RPG fare there. Another issue that I had was the game's supposed to be controller compatible. Uh, I would have liked to have played this with controller. I played, ended up playing it on keyboard because my Xbox controller that's supposed to be supported just would not work. I tried your typical troubleshooting steps and just could not get it to properly function. So, uh, that was kind of unfortunate. And um, the pixel art's pretty great. The music's pretty good. The game is built on RPG Maker. So, these are a lot of kind of recycled assets. Um, there's some original art in there. It was a solo dev. So, uh, I mean, RPG Maker makes sense here. And then another issue that was a minor one. But again, these little things put them together they start to weigh a lot it was just the music just sounded really weird because a lot of the time you know you do tracks and they're x amount of length and then they'll they'll like they'll fade in and loop and that you won't know where the track technically ends and this you know the track just ends there's like a moment of silence and then it just starts right from the beginning again it's really kind of weird and jarring when you hear it once you hear it once you like you can't unhear it well, at least the music's good to listen to. There's a wide variety of enemies in the combat. There is different status effects. You can be poisoned, slap, confusion, all that sort of stuff. Um, you gain XP and gold. You can level up. Your stats go up. There's no skill trees or anything fancy like that. So it's just when you level up, just your basic stats will increase. And... There's a lot of variety within the environments and in the world. There's, you know, green forests and there's snow areas and tundras and things like that. And then there's a lava area and 
each area has its own set of enemies that are unique to that area. It does have a lot of variety for such a short experience, which is really nice. And just in general, it was just fun to kind of explore this small world and the small amount of playtime that I spent with it and just kind of really soak it all in. And again, the story is in interesting enough that it kept me engaged throughout. I would be maybe curious to go back and see what the endings were I missed potentially. I got two different endings that I won't spoil, but I think there's at least one more. Um, but there's no guides or anything, so hopefully this review will bring some eyes to the game because it is a solo dev and, you know, it, it is a fun game um, for what it is. I mean, it's worth the $5 easily and it's, it's just a lot of fun. It's four hours well spent. So if you're a fan of these types of games, then this is definitely one to check out. Um, it's not really doing anything better than any other game in the genre. So if you mostly stick to your uh, Xenoblade Chronicles and your you know, Octopath Traveler, your modern Final Fantasies and Dragon Quest and stuff like that, this, this might be a, too rudimentary for you. But if you do appreciate a more simplistic shorter experience this this is a pretty fun one so i'd say check it out if it looked interesting to you it's it's kind of hard to tell from the footage it's just very basic it's what you would expect in the super nintendo ps1 era but so i think it's worth checking out worth giving a play like i said it's three to four hours to play through it so it's available now on steam and if this review helped you please give it a thumbs up comment like subscribe all that stuff i do a lot of indie content reviews achievement guides all that sort of content so i appreciate you taking the time to watch this all the way through to the end and i'll see you next time